My name is Andrew Morrison and I was responsible for reviewing the professional standards which were published in 2012. I also reviewed for SQA the Professional Development Awards for teaching in further education. As part of the review of the PDAs, we tried to encourage the use of a professional dialogue instead of written assessments. You will perhaps have seen on the CDN website two videos of professional dialogue. What we have done now is we have internally and externally verified these videos and I would now like to introduce you to Patsy Allen who carried out the external verification process. Hello, I'm Patsy Allen and I'm currently the Senior External Verifier for the Professional Development Awards in Teaching Practice in Scotland's Colleges and I've reviewed the two dialogue videos many times uh, and I'm going to give you my thoughts about the dialogues with my external verifier hat on. Thank you Patsy. So the first question I would like to ask is how did you find the use of the professional dialogue as a method of assessment? Well, I was very pleased to see that uh, professional dialogue was being used in this instance to cover this particular uh, assessment. Um, I felt that it allowed the candidate uh, to describe and to reflect on her own teaching practice and skills. Um, the atmosphere was really good in the video and I found that the candidate began to blossom and you could see she was really pleased to be able to share with her assessor all the things she did with her learners in the photographic studio. Thank you Patsy. So how do you know the professional dialogue was agreed by both parties? Well initially I didn't know that it had been agreed but um, it was obvious that the candidate had been briefed um, uh, about the use of a discussion, otherwise I don't think she'd have been quite so vocal and relaxed about it. And even to the point of being so well prepared that she brought evidence of her learner's work with her. Um, and this was also stated in the IV report that the candidate had given sight of the evidence, the assessment evidence requirements uh, before she came. Um, the assessor was also very well prepared. She had a list of questions and a script and I was given a copy of that so when I watched the videos I could follow the script. Thank you Patsy. So how was the candidate informed and prepared for the professional dialogue? Well, as I said before, the candidate was given a copy of the assessment requirements in advance. And throughout the discussion, it was obvious that um, she had prepared herself in advance for it. Um, but during my EV visit, I always asked to speak to uh, the candidate, so I would check all this out with her then. So what else would you look for from the professional the dialogue evidence available to you? Well. I would like to see a checklist or um, the assessment uh, record that they were mapped to the outcomes, the knowledge and skills and the evidence requirements uh, so that I can see that there are no gaps in the evidence from the professional dialogue video. But if there were any gaps from that video, I would like to see them um, perhaps go over that in a different way and cover the gaps. Okay. So how straightforward was it to sample the audio video evidence and hone in on a particular topic? Um, in this particular instance it, it wasn't terribly easy to, to hone in uh, but because the, both the videos were very short, I was able to just fast forward on to uh, any part that I wanted to listen to or see again. Um, but what I would really like to see and a recommendation I would make is that the centre uh, map uh, all the questions to the standards and the evidence requirements.
So Patsy, what were your thoughts about the questions being asked by the assessor? Um, the assessor used a variety of good questions. She started off with an open question and then she followed it up with a supplementary or a probing question. Um, she listened intently to the candidate and summarised uh, what the candidate had said really well. Um, the assessor should always encourage the candidate to reflect on their own performance and they should do this without using leading questions. Um, I would discuss this with the assessor uh, during my visit if I thought she had been doing that. So how do you know that the candidate evidence was authentic and sufficient? Well, I particularly like the candidate's descriptive answers. She went into a lot of detail and this was backed up by a sample of her learner's work and uh, she described the peer observation that her learners undertook. Um, all of this along with the two observation reports and the professional discussion videos would give uh, sufficiency of evidence in this case. Um, to further confirm authenticity, I would like to see that the assessor and candidate uh, put their signature and dates on any hard copies of evidence in the portfolio. Okay. So could you clearly see assessment decisions were reliable and clearly communicated and recorded? Well, the college standard paperwork was used and that was called the um, assessment feedback form. Um, this form was completed by the assessor after the professional dialogues were uh, completed um, and all of this was related to the evidence requirements. Um, a discussion a decision is given at the bottom of the page with a signature and date by the assessor. Okay, so where would you expect to see the candidate product evidence which was identified during the professional dialogue? Well, I would expect to see copies of that in the candidate's portfolio and it mapped to the evidence requirements. Um, I would also ch uh, ask the, the candidate about this during my visit. Okay. And how would you describe the feedback to the candidate from the assessor? Well, I found the feedback from the assessor to the candidate was descriptive, positive, extensive and full of praise during both the professional dialogue videos and in her reports later. I understand that IV is an important part of an EV visit. So what evidence was there that the internal verification process was effective, particularly with regard to the professional dialogue? Well, the internal verification report uh, was produced in line with the college procedures using college paperwork, and this was all aligned to SQA's requirements. Uh, as well as that, the comments on good practice made by the internal verifier in her report were descriptive and extensive as well and full of encouragement to the assessor uh, for her consistent handling of the uh, professional dialogue. Um, I would have a discussion though with the internal verifier at my visit and explain more fully my recommendations for change uh, to the centre's practice. Okay. So how could the feedback to the assessor from the internal verification process be described? Well, the internal verifier's feedback to the assessor on these professional dialogues uh, was very thorough. Um, detailing where the assessor had demonstrated good practice throughout the process. Thank you, Patsy. So was good practice by the candidate identified and explored by the assessor? 
most definitely. Um, I particularly like that the assessor identified uh, at least twice a good practice by the candidate. For example, the candidate's use of peer observation and critique by her learners and um, the extra measures she took with somebody who had a special assessment need. Um, and the assessor explored this in you know, quite a bit of detail, uh, giving praise where it was due. Thank you, Patsy. Um, was there any good practice demonstrated by the assessor uh, or the centre during the professional dialogue overall? Yeah, I identified two areas of good practice. Um, the first one really deals with the assessor's good practice, and that was the before, during and after preparation process, which ran smoothly and supported the production of good professional discussions. Um, the second one was the repeated identification of links to college requirements, curriculum for excellence and to any relevant theory which was made by both the assessor and the candidate during the dialogues and all of that was good practice. Okay. What recommendations would you discuss with the centre team? Uh, with the centre team, I identified four areas that um, uh, I would give recommendations on. Uh, during the EV visit, I spoke with key personnel. I wanted to find out their approach uh, to delivery and their practice uh, with particular reference to the professional dialogue. And I explained that they even though it was a dialogue, we still needed to reference to literature and I would expect to see that the candidate would have a reference list to support anything she mentioned in the videos and that would be in her portfolio. That there would be referencing to questions and answers in a checklist to the evidence requirements. Uh, the third thing was to um, insert timings uh, for various questions or topics, so it would be easy to find uh, these topics if I wanted to search further or in fact the IV wanted to search further into these. And the fourth one was to further authenticate evidence was to put signature and date on any hard copies in the portfolio by the assessor and the candidate. Okay, okay thank you. How could the overall conduct of the assessor be described during the professional dialogue? Well, I found that the assessor was very well prepared with a script ready and a list of questions and she came across as very professional and confident. Um, and, but at the same time, she was very friendly with the candidate and encouraged the candidate. And she gave the candidate time and space to answer any questions she, she put to her. Okay. So finally, how could the whole professional dialogue process be described? I would describe it as a really well, a really good professional piece of work. Um, it was well structured and flowing. Uh, the assessor, she kept the pace going so that there were no awkward silences um, and it, it was good to see that the candidate did most of the talking and that she felt able to, to, to go on describing things for as long as she wanted. The discussion it really allowed the assessor to probe the candidate and to really find out what she did in her practice. Well, Patsy, thank you very much for that. I think that gives the whole process of professional dialogue some credence and will certainly help the sector.